This episode of the Doing the Yarn podcast was taped at the EWF Arena right before their June 2nd show with our guest, the EWF's American champion and one half of the EWF tag team champion, Super Beetle. I hope I hope you enjoy it. And if you like, please give me a follow on Instagram at Doing Your Own Podcast, Facebook, fan page Doing Your Own Podcast, YouTube Doing Your Own Podcast, and Twitter at Doing Yorton. That's at Doing underscore the underscore Orton. Now, without further ado, let's get into the podcast. For the interview? <laughs> Not really. My arms are gonna hurt. I feel like my arms will hurt too. Like even you probably have more muscle than me, and my arms will start to hurt real <laughs> quick. So. Um. So let's get started. Um. Were you a fan of wrestling growing up? Absolutely, all my life. Um. The first time I it got turned on the TV was uh the Raw after Survivor Series in 1998, and it it's weird to say, but the first thing I saw wasn't a match or anything. It was Stone Cold getting hit by a car. And I was like, why is this on live television right now? Somebody should call the cops. And I was like instantly hooked, like hook, line, and sinker into that story. Who were you a fan of wrestling? Uh, growing up, it was, it was The Rock, it was Shawn Michaels, and it was Steve Blackman, oddly enough. Uh, the Lethal Weapon. Yeah, it was one of my favorites. The Lethal Weapon. The Lethal Weapon, <laughs> the lethal weapon has one of the greatest entrance musics in wrestling. It's just that dunk, 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 dunk. Coming out with sticks? Yep, you get super pumped up. Like, I still work out to that. I get super pumped up by it. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta have your stars, but there's always someone on the undercard, someone, one of those guys that, like, not everybody remembers that that kind of inspired you in Steve Blackman's mind. What was your favorite match growing up? Growing up, um, John Cena and Shawn Michaels had a match after WrestleMania, a couple of Raws after WrestleMania, I believe it was in London, and I just remember being just hooked instantly. It was a 45-minute match. They didn't say it was going to be 45 minutes. They didn't act like it was going to be that long, but... It, they just kept saying, and they had they announced matches for later after that match too, and they never got to them because the sh- that match went that long. And I remember Shawn Michaels like lost his title shot or didn't get another title shot if he lost, and it was the first time I ever saw anybody uh, flip onto their feet out of the attitude adjustment. And he went out of that and hit a super kick, and it was just like ah, me and my like I have a brother, and our faces just completely melted off. It was one of the, one of the first times I can remember like just holding my breath at the edge of my seat during a match. How did you get started wrestling? Well, I just mentioned my brother, he was getting married, and I actually called up Jesse Hernandez at the School of Hard Knocks, and I said, you know what, we're not party people, we're not crazy people, Um, I just want to give him wrestling training for his bachelor party, like, how can we, how can we incorporate that, maybe go do one, one match or everything, and I went, and Andy Brown was there on the first day, um, or the day we did the bachelor party, and so we all got crazy winded and everything, we were out of shape, and we simulated a a six-man tag match at the end of the day, and I remember sitting on the ropes waiting for everybody to tag me, like, I'm gonna get my shot, this is, this is it, and Andy Brown comes in and gives me a forearm right to the jaw, which was more like an elbow right to the jaw, and I just remember falling on the floor and being like, that was amazing, like, this is what I want to do from now on, and Jesse was all worried, he's like, brother, are you okay, you you just paid for this day, but I don't want you to get hurt. So it was a real fun experience. How long have you been a pro wrestler? I've been uh, wrestling for a year now. A year actually last week. Uh, uh, May 28th is when I when I hatched. How did you feel when you 
won the American title? Oh gosh, um, I faced Anthony Idol and I, I faced him a couple times. Big guy, it's basically me getting in the ring and getting thrown around a ton. And winning the American title, um, like I talked about, I started with my brother. He lives in Arizona. He was actually down here for that match because it was our big anniversary show. And being able to win in front of him, in front of the rest of my family, in front of the people I started with, the people who introduced me to wrestling, is it's it's an indescribable feeling. Like there there are pictures where I can see them in the background and the smiles on their faces. And it I the first time I saw those pictures, I started to tear up just because that's that's why I'm doing that's that's what I'm doing this for. And just to see them proud of me is is a completely different feeling altogether. Did you do any type of grappling? prior to wrestling? Uh, just in my bedroom with my brother. It's, yeah, we'd throw each other around and we weren't the cleanest people, so we'd always have dirty toys everywhere. Not dirty toys, but toys <laughs> all, all over the uh, all over the floor. And so one in particular, yeah, I remember him rock bottoming me, me onto just, back in the day we all had like die cast metal toys. There was no rubber or anything. There was, it was all metal. So I just remember him rock bottoming me on like, on uh, Hot Wheels and Legos and stuff. But that was that was the extent of my grappling before uh, the school of hard knocks. That's like me and my dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I we used to have a uh, a bunk bed, and my brother slept on the top. So my dad went up to the wrestle with him. I couldn't sleep. I went to the uh, I went to the living room and just watched TV. Like cause they never let us stay up past like eight thirty and watch TV. So I was like, oh, I'll sneak in some TV and right now see what's on at eleven o'clock. And uh, the bed broke because they were wrestling up on top. <laughs> so the top bunk broke, smashed through, and they're like. Oh my gosh! And they're like pulling it up, and I'm just standing <laughs> in the doorway, like, "What are you guys doing?" <laughs> um, up to this point in your career, what has been your favorite match to be a part of? Oh, my favorite match. Uh, there was a match in Mentone, and Mentone is kind of a like an outside show. It's it's always 150 degrees out there for some reason, and it's like an hour up the road. Um, and, but it's a smaller show, and. There was a match with me and Andy Brown versus Fidel Bravo and Friar Juan Ramon. And everything, I, that's the first match I, I can just remember everything clicking and, and everything, me being more confident in myself than the crowd was confident in me. Because those first couple matches you get in there, you're kind of nervous, there's butterflies flying around and you're just kind of like, all right, I'm going to do this, but I don't know if I can do this yet. And that was the first match I can remember being like, oh yeah, I got I, I, I understand everything now. Um, for the next question, there doesn't have to be one, but do There's you have... There's going to be eight, trust me. <laughs> do you have a favorite opponent? Oh, gosh. Um, I mentioned Anthony Idol because he throws me around so much. Um, Fidel Bravo is probably one of the best that we have. And so the fact that so many of my early matches were be, were able to get in there with him. Those were such good learning experiences for me coming in. Um, that those are some of my favorite matches. And then just at training, we have matches like me and Andy have training uh, training matches a lot that I really enjoy. Just because we can uh, wind each other cardio wise and learn new things every time. And it's different being in there. Like I can I can go in there with someone my level or someone I started training with, and it's a completely different match if I go in there with someone much higher on the learning scale than me that's going to push me to my limits and maybe find new ones. So I would say those three people are, are definitely up there. Mm -hmm. This is our final question. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way people can follow you on any social medias? Oh, absolutely. All the social medias. <laughs> if you go search Real Super Beetle on everything, uh, it pretty much all lines up and that's all me. Don't just search Super Beetle because that'll bring, bring up a bunch of uh, 1972 Volkswagens. <laughs> but, so add the reel at the beginning and that, that's all going to be uh, me. Cool. Um, thank you so much for being on my podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Thank it was fun. <laughs> I didn't know it would be that quick. You're fast. <laughs> Short to the point, right? Yeah, absolutely.